And now on the line is Martina Jennings, the CEO of the Mayo Roscommon Hospice Foundation. Martina, welcome to the programme. Thank you, Darren. Thank you for having me. Okay, Martina, I, I, I know you have great news that happened only late last week, and we can talk about mm-hmm. that in a few minutes. To start off, could you tell me and our listeners on the RFM a bit about your background and about the history and evolution of your foundation, please? Yeah, Darren Mayo's Common Hospice Foundation was founded 28 years ago in 1993. Um, it was founded by a, a local doctor who was visiting people in their own homes who would have been at end of life and wouldn't have had palliative care or any comfort care at the end of life. And he saw a real gap in the service. So he himself and a few others um you know, gathered up some support groups to fund a palliative care service in both counties. So it started at that time then with one doctor and one nurse. It has grown now to over, I think, 30 medical professionals in Mayo and Roscommon. They're now actually employed by the HSE and funded by the foundation. So we fund them through our 12 charity shops, community fundraising and major donors. Okay, and um, uh, we we talk maybe a bit now about your. I know a, a new hospice opened in Roscommon last mm. Friday. N- 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 I believe n- n- no less than the current president of America, Joe Biden, has a big connection to your foundation, doesn't he? Yeah, that's right. Um, I suppose I want to go back a bit. The the dream of the foundation was always to have a hospice in both counties, and four years ago in two thousand and seventeen, um. The, Joe Biden at the time would have been just come out of his vice presidency and he's a cousin of our fundraiser, Larita Blewett. So he came over to turn the sod on our Mayo hospice. Um, he did that in September 2017. In two years later, we opened the Mayo hospice. It's a 14-bed hospice in, in Castlebar. For, um, it cost us €9 million Euro to build, all coming from fundraised income. And then last Friday... Two years later, we launched our Roscommon Hospice, an eight-bed unit, which has come in under budget as well at a cost of $6.3 million, again coming from fundraised income. So when we launched our Mayo Hospice, um, Joe Biden at the time would have been running, running for president, and he sent us a good-luck message at that time. He had hoped to get over, but the presidential campaign was in full flow. And last Friday, he sent a live video link from the Oval Office to wish the foundation well again and has vowed to come back and visit us sometime during his presidency. That's cool. Yeah. I, I saw some photos of the hospice in Roscommon and I saw a couple of the hospice in Casabar as well. D- d- they l- look like beautiful buildings, do you agree? They, oh, they absolutely are, Darren. They, um, they're built with the family and the patient in mind, from the front door to the back door and to every room. Each room has its own private garden and patio. Um, you, you know, the bed can go out into that patio. So I, I think at end of life, what a lot of people miss is the basics. They miss the outdoors, they miss nature, they miss the rain on their face. And we've done it in that, that way in mind. There's beautiful daycare facilities. The landscaping is absolutely stunning in both facilities. So everything is from the patient and their family. This is their home from the minute they come in the front door. And it's very important to say as well that it's not always end of life. 70% of patients that go into a hospice will come home. You know, so they might go in for pain medication to manage their pain or psychosocial counselling or to just find out where they're at on the journey of a life-limiting illness and get their heads around it and their families' heads around it. But generally, people want to be at home and that's that's what the staff will, will work towards. I never heard that before. So you're saying that seventy percent of the kind of patients yeah. or clients who go in don't actually yeah. like die there, no? No, no, seventy percent will go home. You know, a lot of people want to come home and you know, the other fact that people don't realise as well is forty eight percent of our patients are non cancer. So they would suffer from life limiting illnesses again like motor neuron, multiple cirrhosis, C O P D. And these the the earlier that people engage with palliative care, the better mm-hmm. quality of life there are. You can't control the outcome a lot of the time, but you can certainly improve the quality of the life they've left. Okay. I imagine that your two hospices have enough space to cater for the population of the two counties, do they? Absolutely, yes. Um, the Both both were done on the... Um, 
population of both counties. So the population of Mayo is 125,000 and May and Roscommon is half that. So, yeah, it will be based on that. And it will be based on the National HSE Palliative Care Service Plan as well that was launched a few years ago. So these would, beds would be suitable towards the, the, that population. But also it's important to point out that Roscommon is built in, the, we'll say the inpatient unit is built in, in an L shape. So if the requirement comes down the line in either er, either counties, we're committed to expanding the beds. That's cool, yeah. I was reading on the internet over the last couple of days, This is I find this amazing, that uh, most, if not all, of the funding for the two hospices came from the communities, didn't they? Yeah, all of it. All, all of, of yeah. it. 100% came from fundraised income. So the cost of the two hospices was just over £15 million, and every single cent of that came from fundraised income. So it came through our shops and through community fundraising. But I have to say, Darren, the communities of both counties have been incredible in supporting each other. So the first hospice to, to, to be finished was Mayo and Roscommon got behind that hospice to make sure it was done. And when that was done, the Mayo people didn't stop. They got behind the Roscommon hospice to make sure that was finished. And, you, you know, we took, that was the vow we made, that we would build both of these hospices. And I, I do have to commend the government because they have come in behind it and provide the running costs for both. Now, we are committed to funding any shortfalls and we will continue to fund palliative care in the community. So this has been a collaboration between ourselves, the communities and the government, the HSE and the Department of Health. Hmm. I know you mentioned at the start of the interview that you have uh, charity shops across the two counties. Can yeah. you tell me a bit more about these? I, I uh, n know your shop in Cassery. Yes, you've been a Roscommon man, Darren. Mm -hmm. um, it's, yeah, so the, our Swinford shop would have opened 21 years ago. We now have nine shops in Mayo and three in Roscommon, and they are the backbone of our funding and our fundraising. We have over 200 volunteers working in those shops, and we have full-time and part-time staff members but without the shops we wouldn't have been in a position to finish our hospices without the need for a bank loan they've been incredible and even you know they were closed for a long time due to covid like all retail outfits but since they've opened um the income has gone through the roof and people have supported us like never before and i think it's a combination of sustainability People really want to shop in charity shops now, in particular the younger generation. We have a regular customer base, and of course, people want to support the charity and what we're about as well. Yeah, I find your shop in Cassery to be very good for shorts, you know. Uh, yeah. I, I've bought a load of them there over the years. Okay, okay Martina, uh, I am a, a, a tuned Reiki master or teacher, although I don't have a practice of it. I know that yeah. some, some hospices around the world work with Reiki practitioners. Do you do this in your two hospices in Mayo? Yeah. It's common, yeah. It yeah, there's there's aromatherapy and um, hairdressing services, and 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 Reiki will be available in both um, oh, hospices. Sure. Obviously, the Roscommon one has just been launched, so that that service isn't up and running yet, but will be in the next few months. And COVID has um, prevented a lot of daycare services going ahead, and that, that that's common right throughout the country. But yes, we will be hoping to have those services available. I'm delighted. I love. I'm. I've been able to do Reiki for the last twenty or so years. I love it. You know, I'm delighted Good. you're going to have that. Uh, Martina, to come towards the end of the interview. Is there anything else you want to tell our listeners in Dublin about your two hospices and plans for the future, along with anything else about the hospice experience for those who don't know? Yeah, we're um, now that we're, I suppose it's important to let people know that we're not finished. Now we will launch our five year. Um, service plan in Mar in February and you, you know if people want to support us they can go to hospice.ie but I suppose the important thing as well I'm, I'm aware of where you, you you know this this interview has gone out in Dublin Radio I, I would encourage anyone listening to support your local hospice be it Our Ladies be it St Francis in Blanchardstown um, support your local hospice because every cent you go you give to your local hospice goes back to palliative care services and eventually somebody will use this service in your home.